people in school think projects are from the Alta University, Bill Lehavu, UCN, Kuala, and Christian Yemen, and Protestant Health Center in Stanford, Christopher Okay, in Lee, and Union. So, first, some background on CPUs and GPUs, and why would you want to use GPUs on scientific calculations? So you compare a CPU to a sports car and a GPU to a truck. So if you need to kind of transport one package from one place to another, so a sports car is probably faster. <laughs> but for example, if you have thousands of packages, you need to tra transfer at once. So the truck is probably fa a faster method. So that's kind of the fundamental difference between a CPU and a GPU. So a modern CPU might have a four cores or six cores, but the latest GPUs have over 2,000 cores. So of course you need to have a massive number of threads to get any kind of good performance on GPUs. Generally, when you are plotting an existing application to GPUs, you need to first identify the numerical bottlenecks on your code and try to replace the CPU implementation with the GPU ones. So this is kind of the approach that we have used in this project. So usually you also need to, if you want to have good performance, you need to also port other functions which may be non invasive but for example if you want to minimize memory transfers and get good performance, you need to also kind of do a lot of small functions with GPUs, which might not be so efficient. So theoretically the performance <coughs> which you might get if you are using a code which is optimized on CPUs and on GPUs, it's something like if you are using the latest Tetra generation GPU card, it might be something like 18 times faster than the first CPU and have something like 6 times the memory bandwidth. Most of you know the G file is coded in Python with some C extensions written for performance critical parts. And the goal of our GPU implementation is that we only make changes to the low, low level of routines. So all the high level algorithms and routines stay the same. And we only try, try to solve each other. So that pretty much the Python code is same on CPUs and GPUs and we only make changes to the C code. So that, for example, the GPU is the number toolkit for numerical operations and in the GPU version we use the PyPuda toolkit which includes the GPU array module which can be used to replace the ND array module in number. And also we have replaced the plus course with CUDA plus course and we have given several custom CUDA kernels to speed up the calculations. And all of this is done using double precision arithmetic. So we have mainly used GPUs of the ground state solution in GPUB. And as most of you know, the GPUB uses this called iterative solution called self consistent field calculation to solve the ground state. And the most computationally intensive parts are the construction of the Hamiltonian operation, subspace diagonalization, 
that require wave functions and autonomous sensors. And these are the and these are the kind of parts of the code which we, which we are using GPUs to accelerate. So in the Hamiltonian operation, the normally the most time consuming parts are the calculation of the hard tree and the exchange correlation potentials. Generally the hard tree potential is most of the time. And it's solved from the Poisson equation using the multi-grid solver. And the basic operations for the multi-grid solver are finite difference tenses for the Laplace operator and restriction and interpolation operation between the fine grids and the <coughs> grids. And, and in the GPU version we have written a custom CUDA kernels for all these operations. And the Poisson solver is done entirely on GPUs. And depending on the grid size you can expect something like from 10 to 20 times speed ups using a single GPU. The larger grid size generally means that you get better, better performance. So, in the GPU version, we are using the new version of LibXC, which allows you also to use GPUs. And this can be a performance bottleneck, especially for small systems. And generally, the GPU public, we are using GPUs to calculate everything else. So the exchange correlation potential becomes kind of meaningful in performance terms. So it's in the LibXC code, it's pretty easy to implement more functions using GPUs. And uh, most of the code parallelized really well on over grid points. And basically you can get pretty good speeds ups depending on the functional inputs. But in practice, when you are using lit X and GPUB, you have to do some kind of grid manipulations so that speed ups in practice are not so long. Then there's the 
Fermi gene bureaucrat and a new Kepler gene bureaucrat. So, as you can see, it has been some already large, something like over 30 times with Fermi and, and something like over 40 times with Kepler, depending on the kernel and the freak size. But basically, the problem, of course, <coughs> usually tend to use as small grids as possible in g -pop. So we are dealing with at these kind of areas where the performance benefit is not so large. The solution to this problem is to use this method of batching. So instead of having one kernel kind of process on one grid, we take a block of grids and have one kernel which calculates the operation on all of these grids on, on a single block. So this can, uh, can increase the performance a lot on most of these special operations and, and several of the brass kernels like this dot product kernel. So especially on small grids can have something like 10, 10 to 5, 5 to 10 times the performance benefit. Now that you know how we have, how we have created this GPU accelerated version, so you might want to try it yourself. So, unfortunately, this is not currently integrated in a trunk. And not in the build system, so you need to take some extra steps. So the extra libraries you need to have a current version of LibMC, CUDA toolkit, and the Python Python module. So first you need to get the CUDA branch from sub version 3, and then in the gpubc slash CUDA directory, you need to edit the mic file, main file to get the correct libraries and the include directories and then, then you run my make to build the GPA CUDA library which is used to, well, for all of these CUDA functions. And in the customer's file file you need to define this GPA CUDA macro and then add this CUDA libraries and test correlation libraries. And then you can pretty much continue with the normal installation. And in the current version, most of the tests in the test suite should pass successfully. There might be one or two, but actually they are the ones which are not using the GPU, so I'm not sure why that. Using the GPU version is pretty simple and it should be quite transparent to the end user. So the simplest way is just to use this common line option CUDA and then run, run your Python script normally. Or another way is just to pass CUDA is through parameters to the GPU calculator. Both of these options automatically take the first available GPU card and use it for computations. And there are two additional common line arguments. There is this debug CUDA, which basically takes, takes each operation performed on the GPU, performs the same operation on the CPU, and then compares the results. So it can be very useful for debugging. And then if you want to get accurate timing information, you have to use this CUDA sync option. Basically it synchronizes the calculations in the GPU card with the GPU timers. systems 
which you can calculate using a single GPU card. So here you can see the speed of for individual parts of the code and then the overall speed up, which is for the silicon case around 10 and, and from the coloring case is about 8.5 and the time is in seconds per one SF, SCF iteration. Increase the size of the system 
and the number of MPI processes and try to keep the work done on a single GPU or CPU we say. So we start with the 80 atom carbon nanotube and then increase the size to 320 atoms and at the same time we increase the MPI task from 1 to 12. And here, here the same calculation on CPUs and then on GPUs. And then we can compare each at each step. We compare the CPU performance with the GPU performance. And this shows the overall speed shots using different MPI tasks. So as you can see, even when we increase the number of MPI tasks, the speed shots stay the same or or increase a bit. So, so the width scalability of this GPU code seems to be pretty good. And here is a strong scalability graph using a much larger system. So we have a bulk silicon system with over 1,000 atoms. And we start with 64 GPUs, and then we increase the number of GPUs up to 256 and see how well the code scales. So this is kind of speed up comparison to the 64 GPU case, and this is those kind of the ideal scalability, and this is the scalability of the code, of the GPU code. So as you can see, scales pretty well when you double or triple the amount of GPUs but then the performance starts to drop. And here is another big scalability graph using bulk silicon. So we start with a with a small kind of bulk silicon system using eight GPUs and then we increase the size of the system to over 2,000 atoms with over 8,000 bands in the calculation and the largest system uses 256 GPUs and requires over a terabyte of GPU memory for the calculations so as you can see even on these huge systems the, the overall speed of space around 15 or better, even on, on this 256 GPU case, compared to the equal number of GPU cores. Excuse me, GPUs, is that, so is that counting the number of cores of the GPU core or the number of cores? Yeah, I'm not sure again, it's, uh, the GPUs are number of GPU cores. That's the number you have on that. Yeah, yeah, so we have on the Korean class we have over the one of the class. So to summarize the results, so we have accelerated most of these intensive <coughs> parts of the ground space DFT calculations. And depending on the system size, there's piece of which you can achieve vary from eight to 19 and our multiple CPU implementation seems to scale pretty well, at least in the Greek sense. And the code is available at the South Russian repository and it should be useful at least for testing and trying out. Probably not product. kind of system, uh, computer system you have would typically have one GPU card, say, and 16 CPU cores in, in modern CPUs. In this case, the CPUs, because there are 16 of them, would be significantly faster than the GPU. So 
I mean, basically, you need a system with many GPU cards, uh, more or less equivalent to the number of CPU cores. So, at the end of the day, which system is cheaper to do a certain calculation? Because the CPUs are probably cheaper than cheaper GPUs in terms of, money. of money and, and electricity. Um, I think the current GPUs would be more Well, a GPU typically takes about 300 to 400 watt. It is the same for a dual socket CPU system. So the energy is about the same, and the CPU seem to be maybe twice as fast, twice as fast as the GPU. Is that correct? Because if you have 16 CPU cores and one GPU, yeah, yeah, in that case, yeah, same as assuming that both cases. Correctly, each GPU card has 16 CPUs. Well, no. that depends on the CPU. The GPU card has hundreds of processing units. A CPU has typically 16 in a dual socket system. Okay. Just a comment, I guess it really depends on the button of system. So, this uh, 256 GPU calculates with the system. I think that has four CPU cores. <coughs> Take one GPU card, and I think if you sort of take the equivalent uh, number of compute nodes, then you can say that the GPU was, uh, and also the, into account that the CPU could just scale perfectly, then the speed up was maybe something like six or seven. Nine.